guys, welcome back to Tame Mystical Mermaid Light. This is a pick a card reading on empowerment, okay? I want you guys to feel empowered. I want you guys to feel motivated. We wanna see what empowering messages come through, okay? So we have option one with this rose quartz unicorn. Isn't it beautiful? We have option two with this conch shell. I believe it's a conch shell. I can't remember what shell this is. Tiger's eye. Is it a tiger shell? Tiger shell? I'm not sure. But it's gorgeous. It's real. And we have this Merkaba. Merkaba. Isn't that gorgeous? It's heavy too. It's beautiful. All right. So one, two, or three. I do want to mention that I am open for readings. Okay. You can email me at mysticalmermaidlight at gmail.com. And yeah. I love you guys. I'm hoping all is well. If you like these readings, please feel free to share, comment, like, and subscribe. It will greatly help your girl out. And anytime I can't get a hold to timestamps, I do greatly appreciate you guys letting me know the timestamps in the comments. That's so kind of you guys. So sweet. I love you guys so much for that. Um, and thank you for your patience as always. And yeah, let's jump into your reading. I wish you guys all the best of luck and love in this world. You know, there's a lot going on, but keep the faith. Stay optimistic and keep love in your heart, okay? Keep your heart. Let's get on, get on into this. I don't know why I got emotional while saying that. Whew. Okay. Let's see. Rose Quartz Unicorn. So this already is making me think of someone who's unique, someone who's different, following their heart, pure heart, right? Being different, but still standing up for yourself. I love it. Okay. What do you guys need to know? You have 16, bitch fire, stand up for yourself, the unicorn. That makes me think of the unicorn. Okay, what else? We have 28, protest, start a re revolution. Mm. Protest, start a revolution. Stand up for yourself. Those two go hand in hand. Stand up for yourself. Start a revolution. Bitch fire. Protest. Wow, that's that's a lot of um, that's a lot of intense energy. Okay, let's see what other cards you have. We have Indigo sixty three. So some of you guys could be Indigo children, but this is also making me think of the third eye and the crown chakra. Sometimes this makes me think of the throat chakra for some reason too. But we have clairvoyance. I'm hearing following your heart. It's interesting. My aunt said something to me today. I had to ask her a question. I was sending an email off to someone um, important, and I, I didn't know if I was saying the right thing. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't coming off as, um, you know, negative or confrontational. And my aunt said something to me. She said, no, you said, thing, you said it very well. You said it um, kindly. She said, but let me remind you of something. Always stand up for yourself. Always believe in yourself. You know, stand up for your beliefs. That's what makes you who you are. So never like cower down from your beliefs and your, you know, your opinions in life, that type of energy. And we just got off the phone and that's making me think of this. So we have Coral and it says mercy and forgiveness. So we have clairvoyance, mercy and forgiveness. You have nine and six which kind of makes me think of um, which sign is that that has that symbol where it looks like um, a nine and six on top of each other. And I'm not saying anything sexual, you guys, so don't go there. Um, is that, oh, you guys, I'm, I'm a little rusty. Is that, that's either Cancer or Pisces that has that, is it Cancer that has that symbol like that? I don't know why that came through, but okay. We have seven, we have 10, all right? What else do we have? We have message in a bottle. So now we have 15, we have 15, 16, so we have, six we have seven we have eight why did i say eight do we have eight okay maybe i was supposed to say that you guys we have six we have seven so we have two sixes and we have a seven here a message in the bottle there's something about those numbers that i just messed up on and gave you but we have 50 so we have five six seven no place like home no place like home that makes me think of the wizard of oz no place like home you guys see that spiral in the background is that a spiral it's like a spiral moon face. There's a face there. That's interesting. Okay. Oh, coral. Isn't this interesting? Because 
Doesn't this make you think of the ocean coral? Under the ocean, you have message in the bottle. Makes you think of like that whole nautical theme, something with that. The water, the ocean, seashells, coral. I know that sounds interesting, but that's just what I'm getting. Like this card matches up with this one. And this kind of matches up with this one. No place like home, indigo clairvoyance, going within into your inner temple. Because if you pay attention, you see that house has a light in it. Looks magical, like your inner temple, right? So going within more, the true home is within yourself. And then we have to stand up for yourself and start a revolution. What's interesting is that they have these protest signs outside of this castle. So it's like trying to bring some type of message or awareness to a home or to a, a place, to a, a temple, a castle. It could be any anything. It could be standing up for yourself, speaking up for yourself. For some of you, I know this is going to sound really strange, but I'm also hearing this like standing up to yourself. Like standing up for yourself to yourself if that makes sense believing in yourself it's like releasing all self-doubt you know so that's coming through for you guys but it's time for you to ignite i'm here ignite your confidence like get that spark going of believing self-belief they said self-worth believing in yourself but it's interesting because we have this yin yang kind of energy we have the polarity here because as we also have mercy and forgiveness as well as stand up for yourself and start a revolution so even within this revolution even within standing up for yourself it's all about having that equal balance of okay i'm also understanding of the other party's view of things i have this compassionate ear i'm compassionate of others viewpoints i'm compassionate towards others differences but i will stand up for myself and i will believe in myself and i will stand up for what's right so that's coming through there may be a situation in your life where you're needing to forgive someone maybe for something they did or maybe this has to do with the world right having this how do i say this is forgiving energy when it comes to some of the things that are done in the world it doesn't mean that you're you uh, you know you're allowing of different things to happen that are are negative it doesn't mean that you're okay with it it doesn't mean that you're receptive to anything negative happening it just means that i'm not going to stay resentful i'm not going to stay in victimhood i'm not going to stay in a negative state of mind i'm not going to have this bad outlook on the world just because of this that was done so i hope that makes sense it's the energy of knowing that there really isn't just black or white there's a middle ground to everything and why people do things and what's going on in the world and i don't know why that's coming through but they're showing me gray here they're saying there's a gray there's a middle ground it's not just black or white there's something in between and they're even saying that when it comes to a lot of things that goes on in the world you know even within race with racism you know it's like oh is it always black or white is it always black people against white people white people against black people there's always an in-between there's different nationalities that go through racism or colorism within even within their own you know nationality within their own race i hope i'm saying that correctly so sometimes this is about standing up for the injustices that are within your own community within your own culture and also injustices that are outside of your community outside of your country your culture or your country that's what they would say so it's about fighting for what's right in general and having i'm hearing respecting everyone's rights believing in everyone's worth not just your own, you know, but you lighting this fire, you standing up for yourself is going to trigger other people to do the same. So this is about you speaking your truth. This is about you really tapping into your own inner temple and really understanding what's meaningful to you, you know? So you doing this, you sparking this match, right? Lighting this match is going to create like a wildfire. It's gonna create this revolution where other people decide to join you in standing up for themselves and what's right. So that's what's coming through. But your angels are also reminding you, hey, remember mercy and forgiveness. Remember to have a compassionate view of the world. Do not let the world harden you, you know? Keep a pure heart, keep this, this, keep this unicorn like spirit where it's like yes i'm not afraid to speak up for myself and to stand up for what's right but i'm also not going to let the world harden me because we need more earth angels we need more unicorns so it's funny i had this girl um tell me she said oh you're the unicorn because we bumped into each other twice it was quite strange it's kind of one of those synchron synchronicities like serendipity events where you just bump into someone randomly and 
she said you're the unicorn and then it clicked to me it's because not a lot of people are genuinely nice unfortunately and not a lot of people are, are confident enough to say something kind to someone you know or to speak up about something so sometimes i don't know why that's coming through but Sometimes you have to be that rare unicorn. Stand up for someone else. Speak up for someone else. Motivate someone else. Say something kind to someone. You know, if you see something in someone, say it. Sometimes it's exactly what they needed to hear. And maybe they'll in return do it for someone else. So stand up for each other's rights. Speak up for what's right in the world in general. And also have a compassionate view of other people's viewpoints and what they believe in as well. So you also have this indigo card that's talking about clairvoyance. So this is telling me that this no place like home and this clairvoyance energy is also reminding you to go within into your own inner temple castle, which is your body, it's your soul. Going deep beneath the veil is what I'm hearing to understand what messages the divine is trying to tell you. Some of you guys could be prophets or it's give, this gives me Joan of Arc vibes like, you go within to receive a message. You go into these, these deep waters to receive a message. And you use this message to help others. You speak up, right? You stand up for yourself. You stand up for others. So some of you guys might be called to speak up quite soon about something that might make you nervous. Or, um, or just to speak your truth in general. Or to be seen in some type of way. Or to be heard in some type of way. It doesn't have to mean, oh, I'm going and I'm going to go to the White House. Or I'm going to protest this. Or, it doesn't mean that, although it could mean that. Um, it, or I, don't, I just heard journalism or broadcasting. I'm not sure if it's something like that, but it could very well be, you know what? I'm divinely being called to tell someone that they're going to have a beautiful, you know, rest of the day and that they should smile more and to believe that everything's going to work out fine. Sometimes you get divinely guided messages to tell people, you know, to, to say something to someone to tell people that they're gonna be okay. Sometimes people need to hear that from someone else. It could be as simple as that, or it could be something like, you know what? I'm gonna stand up for this community. I'm gonna stand up for this group of people that, you know, no one's talking about what they're going through, and I feel strongly called to talk about this, or it could be something that happened in your life that you're feeling strongly called to talk about, spread awareness about, to speak up for. It's that energy, okay? Now, you're, our, I think our tarot card, it's from, it's actually, there's a deck called our, our, our Tarot, and it's like women's empowerment, basically. It's a really cool deck. Let's see what that card is. You have the Queen of Cups, and this is beautiful because we have this message in the bottle, which is like ocean energy, and we have this coral, which makes me think of like, you know, the ocean. It gives you nautical vibes, the mermaid, right? And now we have the Queen of Cups, and if I'm not mistaken... I don't know how to pronounce your name, and I feel bad that I'm probably going to mispronounce your name, but I think it's Kay Alun Alulani, this this princess. Apparently, she was a princess, and I wanted I want to read some information on her for you guys, so I hope you don't mind listening about her because I feel that this could be helpful. But the Queen of Cups is nurturing. She's all about emotions and, and being a nurturer, but sometimes the Queen of Cups forgives forget whoa i said forgives wow this is all about forgiveness and mercy this is very much kwanian vibes a bit but sometimes the queen of cups forgives to pour back into herself she's always nurturing and giving to others but sometimes she forgets to nurture herself so i want you guys to remember to nurture yourself and to love yourself and to come back to your inner temple come back to your home always come back home to yourself is what i'm hearing you guys i'm trying to find okay bingo here she is I want to show you a bigger picture of her. There she is right there. And it says 1875 to 1899, Kingdom of Hawaii. Wow, so we have coral and a message in the bottle. No place like home, indigo. Okay, so it says intuition, compassion, sainthood. So Victoria Kewikio Kalani Luna Lilo Kala Ninu Lipalapala. I hope I have her name right. That's a very long name. But um, it says that she was a 17-year-old princess of the Kingdom of Hawaii. So they're saying that Hawaii was being annexed by the United States thanks to the efforts of some American businessmen and politicians who desired the abundant natural resources of the Hawaii, Hawaiian Islands. Upon receiving the news, 
She told Reuters news agency on February 21st, I am going to Washington to plead for my throne, my nation, and my flag. Will not the great American people hear me? So she went to fight for her country. She was a princess of Hawaii and United States wanted Hawaii. And she went to plead for her country and for her people and for her throne. So she stood up for herself and she stood up for her people and she stood up for her home. Wow. That's beautiful, you guys. That's beautiful. Let's see what else we can find on her. I don't want to read the whole thing because it's too long. So apparently she went through an illness, you guys. She had a, a um, health issue. And they, so I guess some may have may think that it, it was kind of um, due to this, the stress of this, because she kind of lost her battle, but her people still respected her because she stood up for herself. And even when United States owned Hawaii, she still fought for Hawaiians having the right to vote. So I'm going to read to you the last part. It says, she was a compassionate person who put aside her own health to serve her people if only for a short time. Her legacy remains alive in Hawaii where the memory of her intelligence, charm, and potential still inspires its citizens. The Queen of Cups indicates elegance, beauty, kindness, and devotion. Your capacity for compassion can shine through in what you do for yourself as well as for others. While this card indicates that you are gifted at intuiting and tending to the needs of others, it suggests that you should take care of your own needs first. Be careful not to exhaust yourself or become too enmeshed in another person's problems. Here are some key questions to consider when you draw the Queen of Cups. To whom do you feel compassionate? What would you what would you like to do for them? How can you act on that desire while still keeping healthy boundaries? So sometimes this energy also is about you standing up for yourself and setting healthy boundaries with others. So she died in um Hawaii, you guys. She passed away at a very young age. And she still is considered the princess. There's still a lot of respect to her name. Yeah, she stood up for her people, you guys. You need to look up her story. There's so much more about her. I was trying to make it um, very short so I wouldn't hold you guys long, but she sounds like a very beautiful soul and she was very young and took on a lot of weight just to stand up for her community, to stand up for her home. Let's see what these two cards mean. We have 15 message in the bottle. Communication, a sign. A cleden, the ancient name for a, sp a spontaneous oracle delivered innocently by the speaker, pointing the way to your highest good. So this is like some type of divinely guided message to point you in the right direction. This is about communication and speaking up for yourself. You guys need to use your throat chakra. Speak up for yourself as well as getting in connection. Oh, why did I say getting in connection? Connecting with your solar plexus chakra to have confidence to speak up for yourself as well as tapping into your clairvoyance your third eye and your crown chakra to see things clearly and to hear divine messages and communication so basically this message is meaningful for i'm hearing a lot of you who may have psychic abilities for any of you it's meaningful for all of you but they're saying if you have psychic abilities specifically if you know you have psychic abilities if you've been feeling off um kind of hearing off centered they're saying get back into land Get back to a place that makes you feel like home and go within. That would be very helpful for you. That, so that's an extra message, okay? Now let's look at 50. 50, 50, let's see. Sorry, you guys. Let's see, where is it? 50, 50, 50. Okay. Authenticity, coming home to yourself, feeling at home, arriving at a place where you just fit being comfortable in your own skin stand up for yourself so this has to do with self-worth and, and believing in yourself and ultimately this is going to create a domino effect when it comes to i'm hearing your energy inspiring others okay to so stand up for what they believe in is right standing up for yourself and standing up for communities and potentially standing up for the world so that's what i have for you guys i hope that was able to give you some type of clarity and insight on what you needed to know at this time don't forget her all right let's move on to option two option two those who chose the tiger shell let's move the unicorn out of the way 
tiger shell. All right, so you guys have confidence. It comes with time and practice. 23, which is five, change. Look at the sword on her back. On her backpack, I said on her back, interesting. And it's funny, because now they're showing me like a, a warrior, like um, think of Xena, what was the warrior princess? But they're showing me someone who has a sword in, like tucked in behind their back. Like, I don't know what that would be called, but it's like, instead of having it on their side, they have it behind them. Would that be like more of like a ninja? Someone who pulls a sword, like there's like a, a, a holding behind their back. They pull it from like above them, like not above them, but like behind their shoulder and pull it. I don't know what, what I'm seeing, but that's what I'm seeing you guys. We have 22, library, take control of your own narrative. Let's see what else you guys have. You have orange, 16, creativity and vitality. We have, I don't know if this is cyan or cayenne, cyan, speak the truth at all times. Okay. So take control of your own narrative, speak the truth at all times. That makes sense. Confidence, it comes with time and practice, creativity and vitality. That's making me think of solar and sacral chakras. And speaking up, your, speaking up for yourself, speaking the truth at all times, that's your throat chakra as well. Look at how these colors kind of align, how they match. You see that? Isn't that beautiful? So you have seven, you have five, you have four. So you have four, five, seven. Okay, what else? Even this has blue in it. I think that's so interesting how these colors line up like that. It's amazing when things have, like that happen in readings. Okay, so let's get into this. What other cards do you have? Oh, we have Y with a question mark. And there's a book with angel wings. You see that? And the number is 31, so you have four. You have two fours, actually, and you have five, and you have seven. What else? You have soulmate. Wow. And this card always makes me think of the song, You're My Penguin. Is that by Christina Perry? And this is another five. So you have five here twice, 55. You have four here twice, 44. And look, they're holding a key. So someone has a key to your heart, soulmate. And look, there's a person in the background. Do you see that? Like some type of divine being brought them together and it's smiling upon them. There's something with books here, you guys. Rewriting your own narrative. Why? Answering the why. It's like you answering yourself, writing your own story, creating your own story. And we have creativity and vitality. So there is something here with you creating your own story and speaking the truth at all times. And I don't know why, but they're showing me like someone who documents history. You know how, like, of course, that's the only way we, we have, you know, stories about, you know, that's the only reason, way we have, like, different stories of legends and historical, you know, um, events because someone wrote them down. So there's something about you guys writing, maybe writing down your story, sharing your story. Maybe some of you are authors or writers or you like books. Maybe you're going to read on other people's lives, biographies or memoirs. So this is here. Let's see what your our tarot card is. The Emperor, whoa, leadership. You have Victoria. Look at that, look at the colors once again. These colors all match up. See that? So, Victoria the Emperor, this is about leadership. Oh, that makes sense. This is about confidence. And look, even the, this one matches up. So, there's something with blues and oranges. Okay, so the confidence card, it comes with time and practice, Victoria. Wow, okay. So it's time for you guys to stand in your power. It's as simple as that. Rewrite your own story. Take control of the narrative. Get creative. Speak your truth at all times. How do you want to live your life? What type of life do you see yourself living? It's okay if that life doesn't, you know, match up or isn't like other people's. If it doesn't match up with other people's views or how they live their life, it doesn't matter. It's your life. So th this reading is kind of coming through and what what the angels are saying to you guys is it's okay to live the life you want to live it's okay to go where you want to go to live where you want to live to be where you want to be to be with who, whom you choose to be with it's okay it's okay to do what you want it's okay to feel different it's okay to feel out of place it's crazy because it makes me feel this tiger shell right it's very unique it's it's a unique looking shell but it's beauty 
why did I say it's beauty? It's beautiful. It holds its own beauty. It's unique. It's different. It has its own story as to why it looks that way. So there's, there's a very strong energy of you guys not letting others control you, not letting the world control you, not being anyone's puppet is what I'm hearing. You are in control of your own life. No one else. So this is about you guys gaining your wings and moving forward. Like having the confidence. She looks like she was in, like she was afraid or nervous to take this train trip or this bus ride somewhere that she wanted to go to. Maybe she was afraid to do it alone. Or maybe someone told her that you're not going to make it or you can't do that. And she decided, you know what? I can do this and I will do this. And she did it. And the sun is shining. And I just heard the sun is shining in her favor. And there's something about sunset for you guys. See that the light is like slowly going down. It's like, I still have time. That's what I just heard. I still have time. You guys might want to go and watch a sunset over the ocean or just look at the sun. I'm hearing something about a sunset. Going watching the, the sunset could be very helpful for you guys during this time. Go write. Take a notebook. Take a diary. Take your journey. Whoa, journey? Take your journey. Take your journal along your journey. Maybe you need to write your journey down, you know? Along your path, you're going to meet this soulmate. I feel that it's multiple soulmates. It's you coming back home to yourself, literally on your way home to yourself. It's also you coming across soul family along your path. It's symbolic. This journey is symbolic. It doesn't mean that you're actually traveling, although some of you could be traveling to foreign places, foreign lands. But I am hearing this is more about you guys speaking your truth, writing down how you feel, and along your journey of being more authentic and coming back home to yourself, along this journey of you standing in your power and being the emperor and the leader of your own life, you're going to meet soul fam, soul mates, that could be friends, that could be lovers, you know, it could even be animals. You're going to feel a sense of I just heard awareness, but also a sense of feeling at home and at peace and comfortable because one, you found that within yourself. You found that within you. And when you found that within you, it kind of changed your frequency to, to kind of attract other people who are also happy within themselves and comfortable within whom they are. And then you guys meet up and it creates this magic, creates this union. So I don't know why it's coming through like that, but I just heard that really loud airplane go by. So there could be something about you taking the initiative to move forward in life in general. Like I'm taking flight. I'm spreading my wings and I'm going to stand in my power and be this emperor, this leader. Okay. So this also makes me think for some of you guys, you will be having a soulmate on the ro more romantic type of um <laughs> how do I say this the more romantic type coming your way uh, that just got a little silly um that felt kind of like girly and um I don't want to say girly but it felt like um you know how people get all worked up and they get butterflies in their stomach and they get kind of um giggly that's how it felt so this might be how this person is going to make you feel quite soon so let's see what energy can we find on Queen Victoria this this emperor because notice she's a queen. Her name is Victoria. She's a queen, but she's showing up as the emperor, which is more of a masculine energy. So I'm quite interested to see what that represents. Let me show you the bigger picture. You guys might want to bring yellow flowers, peach yellow flowers, orange flowers into your space. So it says England, 1819-1901. Power, authority, leadership, determination, confidence. Confidence, wisdom. So at birth, Princess Ale Alexandria, mm, sorry, Princess Alexandrina Victoria was fifth in line to the British throne, the only child born to the Duke and Duchess of Kent. Her father, Prince Edward, died shortly after her birth, and within the same week, his father, the reigning King George III, passed away. None of her uncles had survived, okay, oh, had surviving legitimate children upon their death. So when Alexand Alexandrina was 11 years old, her last living uncle, already an elderly man himself, ascended the throne as William Ivy and Alexandria became his heir. So Alexandria's mother, Princess Victoria, the Duchess of Kent, hired Sir John Conroy as a personal and financial administrator following Princess, Prince Edward's death. Conroy had been hired as an 
Equerry, I don't know if I pronounced that right, to the Duke of Kent two years prior. Conroy was ambitious and had no qualms about manipulating the Duchess in order to facilitate his social climbing. Mm. Julia Bird notes in Victoria, the queen, that later in 1838, Victoria's maternal uncle, Leopold, would write to her that Conroy controlled the Duchess with a degree of power which in times of old one would have thought to proceed from witchcraft. So, what this story talks about is that, um, I'm doing like a brief read over you guys. So, she was abused. So, Queen, Queen Victoria was abused by Conroy. Yeah, so it says, together, Conroy and the Duchess created a set of rigid protocols by which the by which they raised the princess under their care she was largely isolated from all other children and never never left alone in any room even as she grew up she was not permitted to go up or down a flight of stairs without holding the hand of an adult these two conspire oh hold on guys these conspirators believe that if they're psychological wow psychologically abusive tactics paid off princess alexandrina would become dependent on them. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm, like, trying to read it quickly and overlook to see if I can just get a brief summary over this, but I'm kind of feeling called to read it just as it is. So, consequently, they would be the power behind the throne once the princess became queen. So, the idea was they were trying to control Victoria. Even at a young age, they were trying to kind of... Man how do I say it? They were trying to manipulate her or brainwash her or mold her into their liking so that they could have control over her they oh puppet master they were trying to be the puppet master of her literally they were trying to control her because they knew they didn't have power but when she would grow up she would have power so they thought that they could kind of manipulate her and mold her into their own liking so that they would have control wow so they said the princess was distru distrustful of both sir john conroy and her mother from an early age and listen to this. It says, despite her isolation, she found comfort in the companionship of her dog, Dash. How cute is that? So her Sophie, I said, your Sophie can even be um, animals. And her governess, Baroness Louise Lezen. So another Sophie, Alexandrina, became increasingly resentful and resistant to Sir John's attempts to control her. Once, a teenage, once as a teenager, she became severely ill with an unrelenting high fever, nausea, and headaches that last over a month. Despite the Duchess and Sir John badgering her in this weakened state to appoint Sir John as her private secretary. She was steadfast and did not yield. Wow, she was strong. Less than a month after Princess Alexandrina turned 18, William Ivy died. On June 20th, 1837, she was awakened from her sleep and informed that she was now queen. Her immediate request was to be called Victoria rather than her name her mother had given her. One of Queen Victoria's first acts as monarch was to spend some time in her own room alone. 18 years of constant supervision and emotional abuse had not destroyed her strong sense of identity. In 1840, Victoria married her first cousin, Prince Albert of, Sa of Saxe, Coburg, and Gotha. Before she took the throne, Albert had visited her. She was intrigued, but she was hesitant to marry as she had only recently gained freedom from her mother and Sir John Conroy, but in late 1839, Albert traveled from his homeland to visit her once again. So she fell in love. She married her first cousin, and she fell in love with him. They were actually in love. And they said, what is it saying here? Oh, they had nine children, you guys. She was so in love with him. They had nine children. Oh, that's so sad. He passed away, you guys, at a young age. And this is what it says. Her deep, loyal attachment to him caused her to enter a lifelong phase of mourning, taking the tradition to the extreme by wearing black for the rest of her life. She also constructed the highly ornate Albert Memorial in his honor. It was unveiled in 1872. Victoria reigned for 63 years, longer than any previous English monarch ever had before or since, until 2015, when her great-great-granddaughter, Queen Elizabeth II, surpassed her. So... Wow, she, she was a powerhouse. There's so much more to her. This is, she was in love with him. She actually married someone for love, which is kind of rare in those settings and during that time frame. A powerful force, Queen Victoria was known for her unwavering resolve, strong opinions, and leadership skills. Likewise, em Emperor represents a commanding energy that can be at once captivating and overbearing. 
The Emperor's presence in your reading is a call to model compassion and respect for others' boundaries while you sit in a position of authority. It suggests that you have every reason to be confident in your power and influence. People are paying attention to you, or they will be soon. Examine how you will use your stature. Contemplate different leadership styles so that you are clear on how you want to wield your influence. How much importance do you place on being widely respected, recognized, and admired? What qualities do you possess that would make you a good leader? What are your weaknesses in this regard? How can you use this role to benefit others and yourself? She spoke up for herself. She spoke her truth. Wow. And look, she lived on. She lived on vitality. Let, let's see what this why is about. Let's see if we can add on more information because this all of this is matching up. She did not allow anyone to be her puppet master. She was no puppet. She took control of her own life and of her own story and her story is still being told. So you guys might want to find, there might be a book you come across that might have to do with Victoria. You want to look her up, Queen Victoria or Alex, Alexandrina as she used to be called, Alexandrina. So, um, and look, she even changed her own name. Take control of your own narrative, she changed her name. She was that confident in herself. She believed herself, she freed herself. Doesn't that look like someone who was trapped and now they're free? Wow, she picked, she picked up that book and she wrote it herself. She didn't allow anyone to write it for her. Wow, and she found her soulmate. And even when he passed, she still loved him and respected him. Even wearing black for the rest of her life after he passed away. That's amazing. Okay, let's see. She was dedicated. She was very loyal. Let's see what this card represents. She had a loyal heart. That's what they're saying. Loyal heart. Loyal heart. Okay, 31. Motives driving intention, the power of knowing the why. So being intentional, what are your motives? Remember they just asked that in the book. When you're in this position of power, which you guys soon will be in some type of way in life, part one, being the emperor of your own life, but you guys are gonna be in a authoritative, a leadership position soon in some type of way. And they're saying, what will, what will be your goals i'm hearing your goals what will be your beliefs what will you stand up for what will be your intention what are your motives that's quite powerful you guys so asking the why knowing more to the story okay let's see what the soulmates card represents although we kind of have an idea harmonious partnerships love friendship companionship a relationship fostering personal growth so this is going to come through and this is going to help you to stand more in your truth. Even more so, you standing up in your truth is going to attract this, but it's also going to inspire you to grow even further more in love. So this doesn't just represent romance. This represents all types of companionships. Remember she had her dog that she was very close to and her, um, what, what, what was it, her duchess? I don't know what, what that's called. She had a, a, a mate or a friend, a helpmate that was close to her. And then finally she found her soulmate. So, and, and she had nine children, you guys, nine. Until death do us part, right? You guys might wanna look up penguins and how in their mating process, you're my penguin is really coming through. Yeah, there's something with, you guys, I don't know why, but I just smelt like um, sage, but I also just smelt like <laughs> marijuana. So for some of you, I don't know why that's coming through. That, that's so strange. I just smelt that. And I'm smelling flowers now, too. So something with sensory. I don't know. That's so random. But that's coming through, you guys. Bring flowers into your space. Get creative is what I'm hearing. Get creative. Wear oranges. Wear blues. But if you wear a blue, wear a vibrant blue. Wear yellows, whites. This is powerful, you guys. I hope this message was able to give you clarity, give you an idea of what needs to happen right now in your life, what's going on right now, and where you will be on your way to. I'm hearing it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. The marathon continues, right? It's about the journey within it. It's about the story. You don't jump the book all the way to the end. You, you read the story to get, truly get an understanding of how beautiful the ending was because of the journey. All right. So that's what I have for you guys, option two. I hope that was able to give you clarity and insight. If you like this reading, please feel free to share, comment, like, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. But we're going to move on to option three.
Thank you very much. Option three. Music might be symbolic for you guys. I just heard music. The Merkaba, the Merkaba, sacred geometric shape, right? This makes me think of Archangel Metatron, Archangel Metatron's cube. This gives me like star seed energy. This gives me higher consciousness, spiritual activations, transformation. All right, let's see what your message is. You have 20, I am always enough, lighthouse. Don't doubt your worth. Oh my God, this is, a, okay. So you know how tea, certain um, tea companies will have sayings on their tea bags? I had this tea bag that um, said, um, be the light in darkness, be the lighthouse, be the light in darkness or be the lighthouse, be the light, something like that. You are a lighthouse, be the light, something like that. So don't doubt your worth. I'm always enough. 20. Mural. Be your own first priority. 25. Look at her. She's drawing a castle. So maybe you guys are artists, painters. We have seven. We have two. We have nine. I don't know why this is really standing out to me. Maybe some of you, got, you guys like to dry flowers. Or maybe you're being called to dry flowers. Because you, you hang them upside down to dry, to dry them, if, I'm, if I believe. I don't know. I don't know. If I'm not mistaken. Whoa. I don't know why I flipped this. Maybe I was supposed to flip this. I'm, I've been trying to save these for the end. But, oh, my God. When you guys see who this is and you see the mural, the, the art, I want you to guess who this is. Especially if you didn't see that. If you didn't catch that. Okay. I'm going to save that for last. We have Dark Apricot 13. And it says, find the humor. <laughs> There is a little bit of humor in this one. It's a little funny. Okay, what's going on? We have Salmon overcoming adversity, 18. Oh my God, I'm excited because I already know who this is now. And she overcame a lot of adversity. And she was an artist. <laughs> okay, so overcoming adversity. We have nine, we have four, we have seven, we have two. I keep wanting to pick it up. Okay. We have, to be fair, 38. She has an owl over her. She has justice scales, basically. She has a seashell in one, which represents fortune, and she has an egg in the other, and a face in her dress. This is about wisdom. This is about a rebirth. This is about destiny, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, I can see that egg. That represents rebirth. And the, for the cookie, fortune cookie, represents fortune, destiny. And then the owl represents wisdom, and there's a face in her dress. To be fair. And the justice scales are all about balance, moderation, and being fair. So be fair to yourself is what I'm hearing. Be fair to yourself. Be your first priority. Take care of yourself and don't doubt your worth. They also want you to find the humor in life. Find the light in life. It doesn't always have to be dark. They're saying use, use colorful colors. That's what I just heard. Use different colors in life. Paint your own story. Maybe some of you guys needing to wear brighter colors. I'm hearing come out of the darkness. Be bright, be bold, be creative, be colorful, be unique, be different, be weird. Go paint your wall. Go draw on your wall. Be like a child. They're saying like, be like a child. Okay, let's see what this is about. Community. Speaking of child, look at the baby giraffe and the mother or father giraffe. And we have eight in the birds and we have these fall leaves. This is community. Yeah, and there's even another bird over there. So, and it actually says a hotel. And there's, so this is about tribe. This is about soul tribe. This is about community. Okay, let's see what else. All right, ready for your card? Frida Kahlo, the death card. Wow, look at that. Coming out of dark times into the light. Look at those colors. Transformation. This is about transformation. Look, Salmon. Look at how those colors, and all the readings of colors have matched up so perfectly, and I find that so beautiful. Wow, color swatches. Some of you guys really need to paint, you need to draw. Maybe even if it's painting the walls in your room or something like that, there's something about colors. Maybe new lipsticks, eyeshadows, I don't know. Just getting creative drawing, coloring your hair. Get bold, there's something about flowers. Oh, yeah, Frida Kahlo with the flowers, right? flowers drying flowers so bringing more flowers into your space incorporating incorporating them in your work animals flowers mural be your own pro be your own first priority 
be your own inspiration. Be, you know, give to yourself first. Pour back into yourself first. So it's interesting because this overcoming adversity makes me think of Frida Kahlo. Like she went through some health issues and she continued painting. She continued on. She was very different, but she continued on. She kept painting. In fact, she was her own inspiration. She was her own muse, her own life, herself. She did self-portraits, right? So this is about you knowing your worth, believing in yourself, standing up for yourself, being uniquely you. I am always enough. You guys need to be more inspired about your own story, about yourself, how far you've come. They're showing me someone who looks at other people for inspiration, goes online, look for, looks for other people for to get ideas, to get inspired, right? When they're saying you should be your own inspiration. Don't copy anyone other style, their way of doing things, their ideas, their thoughts, or the way they perceive things. Go within, tap into your own, you know, way of doing things. Own your own way of living and being, your own views of the world and life or spirituality. Be iconic, be the trendsetter, be different, be unique. It's like that person who wears something so different to a gala, the Met Gala. Like, just be oddly, uniquely you. And, and whatever that is. And you'll find your own community. Your own, In fact, you won't have to find it. They'll come to you when you're uniquely you. When you are in your authenticity, your community will come to you. So during this time, the divine is asking you to be at one with yourself they're showing me someone who's just sitting down with themselves and they're just being them they're not allowing the world to affect their views they're being them you get the urge to get up and dye your hair blue pink red orange you go and do it you get the urge to wear something that might be considered out of style or it has been worn in a long time you wear it because why it makes you happy you feel the call to paint on your walls, paint on your walls. You feel the call to, you know, draw a self-portrait, do that. Just, it's all about what feels fair and true to you, what feels honest to you, okay? And they want you to know that there is a lighthouse in the, in the ocean, in the water, in, in the midst of the storm, you will find the lighthouse. You will find the light, you will always find the light. And you are always divinely supported is what I'm hearing. You guys have ancestors. You're showing me these skulls that make me think of ancestors. And they're showing me this community card, which is making me think that you have all these ancestors around you. You may not be able to see them, may not notice them, but they're giving you wisdom. They're sharing wisdom with you and they're with you at all times. They're saying, be your own source of inspiration. It's time that you honor yourself. Put yourself on that pedestal, not in a cocky way, but in a confident way is what I'm hearing. And work with these colors, salmon and dark apricot. Yeah, they want you to be bold, be vibrant. I'm hearing hibiscus flowers, peonies, like bring flowers into your space. Work with flowers. It's kind of like that saying, what do they say? Um, all flowers are beauty. It's like, don't compare your beauty to others, right? Flowers look different. They're all beautiful. They continue blooming, right? Even though each one is different from each other, they all have their own beauty. So it's like that. You guys have a lot of quotes coming through. So some of you guys might find quotes that show up, pop up out of nowhere. And you might want to take a screenshot of them or take a picture of them and keep them on you. You guys have like a, a lot of artsy energy, painting, drawing, music is what I'm hearing sculpting pottery interior design florists some of you guys can be florists or really into flowers it's all coming through in this reading okay so let's look up some information on frida kahlo this death card which is about transformation and being reborn again like that egg where is the death card let's see guys hold on Yeah, they're showing me a butterfly that's spreading from its wings. Why did I say spreading from its wings? It's strange, spreading its wings, wow. Transformation, okay. So, let me show you what it looks like in the book, okay? Hope you guys can see that. 
It says 1907 to 1954 Mexico, mortality, grief, loss, transition, and permanence. So for some of you, you might be having a hard time trying, trying to accept impermanence. You know, how we're, we're temporary beings. Our soul is infinite and eternal, but our body is temporary. And sometimes it's hard to... It's hard to come to terms with that, especially when you're grieving someone, when you're grieving a parent or a pet or a, a friend or a family member or a place or thing, right? Grief, grief can sometimes even be places or, or old feelings, uh, you know, it could be nostalgia, like gr grieving these memories or people or places or things or animals that were close to us. So... This is about you guys healing. Some of you guys are grieving. And if you are, I send my condolences. Some of you are needing to find some type of tool, outlet to heal. And if you are trying to find some type of tool or outlet to heal, for you, it could be art therapy. Using art to heal. And which whatever medium you use it in, you know, there's so many different forms of art. Use art to heal. Whether it's color therapy, music therapy, sculpting whatever it is use art to express yourself to feel to heal whether it's writing even if it's working with animals or working within other communities like i'm hearing giving your serve giving your service to others but always remember to pour back into yourself do not like run away from yourself is what i'm hearing always remember to give back to yourself so let's see what this is saying i already know a little bit about frida Kahlo. But let's see what what they're saying about her. This is Frida Kahlo, Ni Magdalena, Carmen Frida Kahlo y Calderon. Was born at her family's Mexico City, La Casa Azul, the Blue House. Interesting, the Blue House. Frida faced difficulty. Wow. They just stopped me there. I don't know why, you guys. I don't know why I just hurt flesh and bones something about flesh and bones that's strange so frida faced difficult emotional and physical obstacles from an early age her parents were unhappy together and made no secret of the conflict between them when frida was sick she contracted polio which affected the growth of her legs and ultimately resulted in her right leg being shorter and thinner than her left so aside from her three sisters frida was isolated from other children because of her illness in the shadow of her parents' poor relationship, Frida had a tense connection with her mother, whom she admired for her intellect, but resented for her devotion to Catholic. Ooh, to Catholicism. So, she, mm, she went through a lot. I even know that. Okay, this is finding the humor in adversity. Finding the humor in your dark past, whether it had to do with religion, your parents, illnesses, whatever it is. Okay, I can never pronounce that word. I'm correctly Catholicism, Catholicism, <laughs> whoa, Catholicism, y'all do not laugh at me, guys, that's, you know, everyone has their word they cannot pronounce, and that, I, that is one word for me, okay, but you know what I'm talking about, Frida was closer to her father who mentored her in many subjects, including his own artistic medium, photography, see, she had a keen aesthetic sensibility from an early age, but did not aspire to become an artist, she wanted to become a doctor, Wow, how deep is that? One afternoon when she was 18, a bus she was riding collided with a streetcar. There were several fatalities among the passengers and Frida herself was nearly killed. Several of her ribs, both her legs and her co collarbone were broken. And many of her spinal vertebrae were displaced. Most gruesomely, an iron handrail impaled her lower body, breaking her pelvis. Wow. Frida spent many months recovering from the accident in her bed at La Casa Azul. She gave up on returning to her studies to become a doctor. However, she contemplated that perhaps she could combine her interest in science with her artistic abilities and become a comp mm, competent medical illustrator. So she wanted to be an illustrator. That's different. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm learning that myself. Having nothing but time, Frida had a special easel fashion to enable her to paint while she lay in bed. Grappling with her isolation while letting go of her past aspirations, Frida also had a mirror placed above her bed. Using her reflection as a reference, she began to paint herself. 
You guys are so much to this. After about two years of bed rest, Frida began socializing again with her old school friends. Along with them, she joined the Mexican Communist Party and acquainted herself with numerous other activ activists and artists. I was about to say activities. Interesting. In 1927, at one such gathering, Frida met the muralist Diego Rivera. Although Diego was 42 years old and Frida only 20, the duo began a passionate tumultuous relationship they married in 1929 and moved to a more rural part of mexico where diego worked on a commissioned mural frida embraced her mexican heritage even more fervently during this time and her painting style drew inspiration from traditional folk art her artistic evolution extended to her personal style and image and she began wearing the more traditional mexican peasant clothing featuring bright colors full skirts elaborate headdress and bold jewelry which she still famous which she is still famously for, known for today. Okay, so you guys, this is about you guys embracing your own identity, your own truth. Even through adversity, being yourself, doing things your own way. I'm hearing you can go your own way. I've, I hear that so much now by Fleet, um, Fleetwood Mac, you can go your own way. But this is about you embracing yourself. Yeah, she went through a lot, you guys. She suffered through, well, she had an abortion because she had failed health. She suffered a lot, you guys. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Frida Kahlo was also bisexual. So she 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 was unique. She was different. She stood up for herself. She did what she felt, you know, was true to her. She had miscarriages. You guys, she 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 even cut off her hair at one point. You guys, she she, she even dressed like a you know what they consider was more like masculine. She was very unique. She was herself. You have to love her for it. Like, she wasn't afraid to love women, to love men, to embrace her her disabilities. This is beautiful. Let's So let's see what the end, there's so much to her, you guys. But let, let me mention this, because this is standing out. Above her are scrawled the lyrics of a Mexican folk song, If I loved you, it was because of your hair. And now that you are without hair, I don't love you anymore. That's interesting. It has to do with her self-portrait with cropped hair. So maybe you guys need to look that up. There's something about that that just came through. That She did that after her split. Which kind of makes me think of um, Beyonce's Lemonade album. Like when she was like in the water, she talked about how she levitated. That whole hold up, you know, um, kind of that scenery. And if I'm not mistaken, she as Halloween, she was um, Frida Kahlo before her. So it's like artists inspiring other artists through adversity that's what's coming through so we have in the last pages of her journal she had drawn images of angels and skeletons shortly before her death in frida's life and work goldsmith writes we see the psych recreating herself psychic re re mm, psyche re recreating itself that's interesting i want to say psychic that's strange i wonder if she was though sometimes we see the psyche recreating itself in a cyclical Mm, why did I say that? Sil Silico <laughs> process of death, transformation, and rebirth. I need to drink something, guys. I'm getting tongue-tied. Hold on. Okay. Sorry, guys. So, where was I? Transformation, rebirth. Her last written words were, Espero algre la salida y espero no volver llamas. I hope I said that right. Or I joyfully await the exit and I hope never to return. <laughs> Okay, so she had a sense of humor. Find the humor. Okay, maybe that's why I'm all tongue-tied. You have to embrace your mistakes, you know, things in life that happen to you. You just have to embrace it. Your adversities, your imperfections, embrace it. Frida Kahlo's life was one of many transitions from one place to another, from one state of health to another. She had to let go of her childhood aspirations to become a doctor. But she found a meaningful life as a painter. And she didn't just find it. She created it, changed it, and moved with it throughout her lifetime. The death card reminds us to give up that which isn't truly important. Mm. It also represents imp imp mm. impermanence of life. This is deep. It kind of makes me emotional, you guys. Our minds are often changing. Our bodies are always changing. When the death card appears, it's time to accept completion of a situation or time in your life. The card asks, what aspects, problems, and situations in your life do you need to let come to an end? How can you transition and transform? How can you recreate yourself? How can you create a new beginning? 
that how can you recreate yourself was channeled that wasn't even in the book that's wild okay so your inspiration is yourself um look at Frida Kahlo how she was inspired by herself her own life let's see what else we need to know 38 let's look up this message okay new life i i keep hearing new life for you guys it's time for you guys to recreate yourself balance justice a need to consider options mutual benefit the law of cause and effect it's interesting because this is kind of made me think of death card law of cause and effect justice scales destiny things that you can't change in life you can't change certain events in life but you can change the way you see them you can change the way you handle them right you can find the humor in this situation in life in the world when the world is chaotic right you can always find the light find the humor overcome this adversity find the lighthouse so let's see what eight represents for you guys community belonging being seen and understood by others like-minded connections a sense of family and friendship knowing your place in the world and ultimately, Frida found her place in the world, right? As soon as she found out who she was, even through the changes, she was consistently changing and transforming, but still she knew who she was. And who she was changed over time, but she was still authentic to herself. And she found her own community, her own tribe. And I wish she could somehow see, which I'm sure her higher self does, how to see how many people she's affected and inspired. And how many artists are inspired by her but not just artists everyone I, i'd like to see everyone as artists even if they aren't painters or, or draw or even if they don't draw or write or or even if they're not even to photography I, I still like to see everyone as artists because our story our life itself is a mural is a painting is a masterpiece no matter what it looks like or may, what it may seem like to others so this is about you guys embracing the ebb and flow of life and even the things that we can't change i'm hearing the serenity prayer you guys want to look at the serenity prayer i got that in another reading not too long ago embracing yourself embracing life finding the humor overcoming adversities finding something to make you smile this is about healing this is about transformation this is about being at peace with yourself and being at peace with life and connecting with ancestors is what's coming through as well. Who can help guide you, give you wisdom? I'm hearing trustworthy ancestors, as well as forgiving, having a forgiving view of your past, you know, and your ancestors and your family and friends and of the world in order to move forward. So some of you guys could be healing and forgiving others, healing bonds within parents, family members, you know, um, siblings, even yourself, or even healing out and releasing generational curses is also what i'm hearing for some of you so to be fair you first must be fair to yourself is what i'm hearing you first must love yourself no matter what be your own lighthouse in return you'll be a lighthouse to others so don't doubt your worth through it all you are still worthy no matter what you've gone through no matter what no matter what you're currently going through be your own first priority okay so that's what I have for you, option three. I hope that was able to give you clarity and guidance. I think this is so powerful. You guys want to look up Frida Kahlo, read up more on her. Look at some of her artwork, you know? And as I said that, it was 3.33 on the timer, so that's quite powerful. So that's what I have for you guys. I'm sending you guys so much love. If you like this reading, please feel free to share, comment, like, and subscribe. I'm wishing you all the best.